to Ajimenta, esteemed leader of the Clusterists. I'm very sorry that you don't feel like I'm as involved in your little struggle as I used to be. We all care so much about what you feel, and after all, you do so much for your little cult, like, hmm, I guess I can't think of anything. Oh, that's right. You're just an ignorant bitch who thinks she could be even half the leader her father was, and we all know what happened to him. Uh, oh wait, you don't know that, do you? I guess you didn't put those little pieces together. Do you really think you're anything? Do you think without my connections, my funding, that this cause of yours would be anything worth thinking about? Not that you even understand half the things I've given you, though. <laughs> it's probably better that way. I guess I should just feel bad for you. Just an undereducated backwater colonist who thinks her moral high ground will accomplish anything but a dizzying fall. One day, when I'm done with you, I think I'll take you through some galactic history. I'll show you all the other cute little isolationist psychic traditions and how they ended up. If you take this tone with me again, I will make sure you die the slow, painful death your father did, you insect. I'm going to bring all my important friends and we'll be laughing, watching a clueless animal die in front of us. I don't think you'll even have it in you to hate us. You'll just whine and beg your prophet for guidance, and I promise you, she won't answer. If this prophet Brayamonta was so powerful, which I'm sure she wasn't, I think she'd love me. I'm someone with actual power, with the ability to affect real change. I'd be drinking wine with her, laughing with her, and we'd be laughing at you! Abraham, send message in five seconds. Yes, Tyrell. Sending message in five, four, three, two, one. Discard message. <sighs> Draft new message to Agimenta. Hello, Aji. I sincerely apologize for my distance lately. Important matters have drawn me off planet. I assure you I'm doing everything in my power to guarantee the victory of your cause and people. Regarding your concerns about TKR and the martyrdom framework, I don't believe that the peacekeepers will be able to utilize it effectively. We can make do without another virtue on the field. We'll just have to be a little bit more strategic. As far as our media presence goes, you're doing an excellent job with your broadcasts but we are losing some ground in the Union voter base. Our polls indicate that the people are becoming numb to the abstract infrastructure damage we've been pushing at them. If possible, could you reach out to some of the village leaders and get some good footage of children with chemical burns or birth defects? This would play much better with the undecided demographic. In other news, our big project is moving along very nicely. All the materials are in place now, and building is proceeding along well. I know it's not going as fast as you'd like, but transferring new personnel after the recent Peacekeeper presence in the Riverlands is too much of a risk. As a gesture of goodwill, and as an apology for my absence, I've been working with Golf House on an exciting operation. Keep your eyes on the news next week, you won't miss it. I again appreciate your patience. May the Prophet smile on our great work. Your humble partner, Tyrell Crine. Send message. Okay, do you need a recap at all? Or do you remember what happened? I'm I'd like a quick little recap. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. well, we'll do it after the intro, then. Okay. Um, hello, and welcome back to the show. My name is Colin, and I am the game master of this fun little group. Joining me today are Brian. Hola, I'm Brian, and I'll be playing Hex, the bureaucrat. Adam. Hi. I'm Adam. I'm playing Joseph, the Infiltrator. Zach. Hi, I'm Zach, and I'm playing Geist, the Ace. And Ewan. Hello, I'm Ewan. I am playing Loyal, the Empath. Great. So, very brief recap. Um, last time you went on a morally dubious mission to destroy some platforms in the ocean, in the lake. And you did so pretty well, all things considered, uh, you know, morals aside, the only real complication is that near the end there, you learned that a former moon devil was guarding the final platform, 
who you were going to kill, but Geist actually jumped in front of the shot, which would have killed him, and you now have captured him and have him with you. Um, you are now headed back. Uh, you're going to be arriving back in the base. Um, procedure dictates that, barring any severe injuries, which I don't think any of you have any like life-threatening injuries, um, you are supposed to head to Nyla for debriefing, and then following that, you can enjoy your time off or do whatever you would like. So with that in mind, what are you all thinking? Well, like what we're going to do? Right? I mean, if you want to head to debriefing, if you want to do something else, like you are... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think like all of us wanted to talk to you. Nyla. Yeah, I think we, we have all need to have words, yeah, words for Nyla. with Nyla. I have yeah. some feedback to give to my <laughs> boss. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing with your prisoner? Uh, I think I'm going to leave him locked in the car for now. <laughs> Roll the window. Sun, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just going to leave him in the... Because I think I checked off a um, a component for that. Yeah, you have the cargo space. Yeah, yeah. You have I, a I paddy wagon. Space. Prisoners. Yep, is what we do. Just one prisoner. Yeah, I'm going to leave him in there for now. And I'm going to... If there's any, like, techs around in the landing bay... Like when we land and dismount, Geist will try to don't fucking touch my frame, and he's gonna storm away. <laughs> <laughs> they they take note of this. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, you go to the usual briefing room. Um, Nyla has prepared it ahead of time, as always, for you to enter, uh, and she is in there, sitting at the end of the table. You know, looking over some reports. And she like kind of gestures to the table for you all to take a seat or do as you will. Geist doesn't take a seat. He stands there. And he he has difficulty emoting physically because of his uh, disfigurement. But he, he looks pissed. His like one biological eyebrow is very furrowed. He's kind of visibly seething as he stands there. Yeah, Joseph's going to look at Geist and then decide he's not going to sit. He's not going to sit either. He's going to stand. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Exits. I guess Oral can't sit because he's too Yeah, bad. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I didn't say anything. He just floats everywhere. <laughs> just vibing. Uh, yeah, she doesn't really pay any mind to the fact that you're standing or she is pretending not to and says, Was it a success? I guess that depends on what your definition of a success is. I assume you knew. Well, if you're asking if I talked to Worthy already. Then, no, I haven't. No, not worthy. Fucking bloop what we were sent to do. She looks up at you and says, You didn't know? Know what? What you were sent to do. I know that we were sent to massacre non-combatants at the behest of one of the corporate council's fucking lapdogs. And we were specifically not allowed our empath into the briefing. And I think I know exactly why. If there's a problem, Geist, I would be eager to hear it. What do you mean, if there's a problem? Since when did the peacekeepers go massacre men, women, and children not affiliated with the Clusteris? I is that just our MO now? This is a problem shared by all of us. Why did we do this? I want to get a vibe on Nyla's emotional state right now, because some of them wants to say something. Could you roll a survey? I sure could. Partial success, a five. Um, she's very tired. She's tired and a little bit annoyed. Uh, <laughs> she's annoyed! <laughs> uh, but with only us? a little bit. She's annoyed <laughs> with you. In the same way you would be annoyed with a child asking why they had to fall and skin their knee. <laughs> oh, my... Uh, um, I have a bond with Nyla. I know her, basically. Yes. She's a good person, I'm assuming. That's completely subjective. <laughs> uh, but as you know her, and I think Hex has a bond with her as well. Yeah, by the um, way... If you can pick up on Hex's vibe, he also is annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> with with Nyla or with Squad? The the squad. Okay, cool. Hmm. Oh, he's annoyed with us. You yeah, he it, yeah. Probably if you want more. Uh, 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she kind of like puts down the reports in front of her and says, may I speak for a minute? Sure, go ahead. She pulls up spreadsheets and displays them in front of you. Yeah! <laughs> it's <laughs> full of graphs and... Oh, you, yeah, you, you asked why did we have to do this. That was the question that, that prompted this. I remember now. Um, and this data that she's pulling up is kind of hard to wrap your head around. Unless, of course, you are Hex. Um, Hex, you know exactly what this is, uh, given your previous role in the Peacekeepers. It outlines the consequences of what would happen if the Peacekeepers failed to uphold their promise to the Uro to remove the Clusteris from the planet. And she points at it and says... In the first few years after the Oro stopped trading with us, it wouldn't be too bad. We'd stop making new colonies, we'd implement some population controls, and all our great representatives would make their way into new offices with promises that things will continue as usual. Then, things would start to break. Replacement components for all our essential technologies wouldn't be available anymore, and this is where the regression really begins. Our last generation of technology that didn't use Oro-made components is decades old, vastly inefficient, and not at all equipped to handle our current lifestyle and population. Not to mention we no longer have the means to manufacture it. Our agriculture retracts rapidly. Crop yields plummet, and the logistics infrastructure to transport it fails. Half of what we harvest rots before we can get it where we need to. Even with strict rationing, we see the first real deaths by starvation on the periphery. Medical technologies are thrown back. Many of our citizens can no longer work without their prosthetics, implants, or medicine. Our welfare systems can pay them, sure, but there's nothing to buy. People lose faith in the Union. Crime and organized piracy all rise drastically. Colonies stop paying taxes. Not that money is really worth that much. And people in the lower levels of government stop doing their jobs. Now we can't even reach the people we're able to help. Mass death, sickness, rioting, violence. Decades of social and economic progress are wiped away. Then, if our projections are correct, when we're at our lowest, the Uro will come back to us. They offer us another deal, with worse terms. Our resources are worth half what they were originally. We give up colonies. We give up some planets in our own solar system for exploitation. Hundreds of millions of people die painful, meaningless deaths. And that's if we're lucky with the numbers. Maybe we learn an important lesson about self-sufficiency. Maybe we hop back on the same damn treadmill because people miss their legs, their delicious yet nutritious meals, or their virtual husbands. Now, back to us. If we don't have the resources of the Council, we won't be able to drive the Clusters out. And in a sane world, the Union would be throwing every single resource it had at this planet, but they aren't, because a substantial number of the representatives think the war looks bad. It's terrible, and I would be lying if I didn't have vivid fantasies where I put a bullet through the back of each of these selfish bastards' heads. But it's up to us, despite the insanity of it, the paltry forces on this planet we are the only force looking to the future instead of focusing on election cycles and good headlines. I'm sorry. I really am. I'm sorry for the things that I have to do and the things you have to do. I just don't want you to have to think about this shit. It just gets in the way of us doing our jobs. You want to talk about painful, meaningless deaths? I watched a little girl fall out of the back of an airship and pancake her bones on the surface of the fucking ocean. And for what? If we want to commit horrible atrocities for money, why don't we just do it to the people who deserve it? Huh? I have half a mind to put a fucking bullet in Bluth's brain the next time I see that slimy fucking bastard. You... <clears throat> Guys, kind of, he takes a breath, he steadies himself. I don't know what kind of monster it is that you think that I have become, but I'm responsible for my team, and we were not prepared for that fucking bullshit. Prepared how? Prepared for the senselessness of it. They haven't been, they haven't seen what war's really like. You don't think that this is a waste of time. This is a waste of fucking time. Don't ever make me blue slapdog again. I won't do his bullshit. I don't care. Find someone else to murder children for you. Is that your official stance on the matter, Geist? I guess it is. And the rest of you? Are you no longer willing to do what it takes to move forward the goals of the Union and ensure a safe future for all of us? Oh, that is fucking politician speak. Listen to yourself. He doesn't speak for all of us. Guys looks back at Hex. Doesn't say anything. 
Hex doesn't look back at him, just leaves it wordless. The statistics don't lie, Geist. I know it's bad, but as much as I hate to say it, we need everyone we have, and we need them to do dirty work. If you think you're the only one doing this for the corporate council, you'd be wrong. I would tell you, but it would just put you at risk. If you can find some better way of getting money, anything, I would be happy to kill Bluth and be done with it. But the fact is, that's where the money is on the planet, and we need them. Geist doesn't say anything. Well, if there's not anything else, and that she uh, gestures at the door. Geist, I think... I think he leaves. Yeah, I, th- I think he leaves. Yeah, Hex wordlessly leaves, gives her a nod, and... Joseph's gonna keep standing there. He's gonna wait. <laughs> he probably looks to Loyal, just to see what Loyal's gonna do. I don't think that I have anything to say to Nyla that Geist hasn't said already. Joseph, do you need something? Uh, I'm gonna look at Loyal. Is Loyal still hanging out here? I think when I say okay, I kind of wait to see if Joseph is, like, needing backup with anything, but if he's not, we can leave together. I'll, I'll give you a nod, just to say, yeah. like, I'll, I'll be okay. <laughs> I leave. Uh, yeah, I turn to Nyla and I say, you seem troubled. Yes, Joseph, I am troubled. I thought I made that pretty clear. Joseph takes a seat, finally, next to Nyla. <laughs> and says... I was hoping we can talk about my other role. Oh, yes. How is that going? Did you send the data over to Goldhouse yet? My comrades seem to feel like they know something's up here. What do you mean? It seemed pretty obvious. That they have moral quandaries about the work we're doing? That possibly I might be doing something else in the meantime. If you want to tell them about it, you're welcome to. I think it might help them, if anything. Those revenue sources I was talking about, alternatives to the council, if we got rid of Gold House, if it was the peacekeepers on this planet that did it, I think some people in the Soul Union would be very happy. Gold House, they do a lot of uh, interrupting back home. Noted. This is good to know. Well, I just wanted to know if I could speak with my comrades about this. I appreciate it. Joseph stands up. He says, Things were difficult on this mission, especially afterwards. I know it might be annoying to deal with, but Geist is like our commander here. If you lose him, the whole Dusklight squad falls apart. It just wouldn't be smart. It wouldn't be efficient. Correct? Correct. If you need to kill any more children, you know who to talk to. He gives Just, uh, Nyla Joseph. a wink. <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> Love you, Joseph. I didn't know about the kids. Oh, yeah, me neither. Wink. <laughs> I think Joseph just turns around and leaves. <laughs> All right. Downtime. Okay, end of session. A really fucked up thing is that Geist has no problem killing kids as long as they're clusterist kids. So we have a marketing problem here. All right. Yeah. The lie was too obvious. Honestly, if Geist actually believed that these people were really affiliated with the Clusterists, he probably would have been all in on it, or at least he wouldn't have, like, he wouldn't have been upset. I love this. I, I, I love that. this subplot. I don't know. It's great. <laughs> I believe it. Okay. We are going to roll your payout for the oh, yeah. little mission, uh, which is going to be 3d6. Oh, fuck. Hey, boss, need me to cook the books? Always. Always be cooking the books. We'll never not take every single... Oh, wait, am I going to die if I do time. that? Actually, no, we can't do that. <laughs> you, you can do it after uh... you relieve your stress. Okay. Just, let uh, let me unwind a bit. <laughs> cook the books so hard to cook your brain. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to roll True. that 3d6? I'll do it. I'm lucky. 
Oh. Here it is. Let's see that luck. Ooh, luck. 11. That's fine. It's not awful. Let's see. It's a partial. Five. It, it's average. It's painfully average. Or wait, do we take, I forget. Fine. Do we take, take the highest? Five. Yes. Oh, okay. No, that's good then. That's really good. I'll so keep you... track. I'm going to keep a running tally of our money because it's going to change before we input it. So I'll just make a look. And in 18, I ain't run writing home about it. Okay. I mean, that would only be six. Actually, actually, no. Crit. I think a crit would be more. Okay. Oh. Would you look at that? So, uh, you the squad earns two rep. Rep. I will track. I will track all of this stuff. And then you get rep. one. Oh, that's full. I think right. It's six. Nice. Yeah, we have four, and we are now at six. So I think that means our hold goes from weak to strong. If I think you have to spend resources to do that. Oh, I will leave it at weak for now. Um, and then you gain one material and personnel because you are a democracy squad. Yes. Um, and every pilot, every pilot can spend materiel to roll dice to reflect fresh quirks on their vehicles, and then remove all level one harm and damage. Let's yes. Go. Everybody, do that. I'm going to take the two material out of the tracker, and I'm going to take two out of our transient pool, which leaves us with three, and that's enough for everybody to make one quirk roll. What do we roll for that? Just a, I think it's just a d6, yeah. Ooh, I got five. You get that many quirks back. Oh, check it. Um, up to your max. No. Oh, <laughs> one. Okay, and we're going to add one tick to the goal clock for the peacekeepers because you have helped them. Hey, uh, substantially, hey. and that actually we have a clock for that. Yes, there, on the factions and relationships uh, sheet, there is a goal for the Soul oh. Union. We don't talk about it a lot, but their goal was to increase Union hold on Terra Brea. Uh, which this has done. It actually ticked it all the way over to the fourth check. Um, oh, yikes! We will. Damn, we're good. <laughs> that's hey. That's you. you. That's your faction. <laughs> <laughs> good shit. Um. Okay. I need to make note because that will have an effect on things. Guys, the king returneth is still seven out of eight. I don't like we'll that, that clock being. <laughs> I don't want to get to it. Uh, we'll we'll get to that. Um, Let's circle back another time. So you also all, every one of you clears any level one harm and damage you have on your mech or person. Wow, Hex isn't guilty anymore? It's just that easy. No, but Oil is. (laughs) Extreme. Extreme guilt. It's not just guilt. It's extreme. Nothing a couple drinks can't fix. Um, Okay, that's do it. And so all squads will gain a benefit. Once I figure out what the benefit will be to you increasing this hold, it'll probably be something money related or an upgrade or something. Do you want to just pick a new squad upgrade for free right now? Oh, baby. Do I want to pick a new squad? There are so many squad <laughs> upgrades. I was actually mm-hmm. looking at them at the beginning of the session. There are so many. And um, we, can, uh, we can decide in downtime if you want. We can just. We should, because I, I have yeah. some ideas, but I haven't even read. There's like so many more squad upgrades than there were in Blades in the Dark. They're like on mm-hmm. the the squad sheet if anybody's looking at the dusk light sheet they're on the left side there um there's a ton of different options but we i think it's definitely something we should do uh outside of yeah there's a lot to chew through it's probably not gonna be very interesting to listen to gotcha okay um yeah so whatever that is you know during downtime you get this new stuff it's very clear that the corporate council did come through with that funding it is significant and hard to ignore um what you got from this uh so you're gonna get status increase with actually no you get it with a private military in caldera lakes it goes up to a minus one to a plus zero yay Um, and then the bill comes in um (laughs) you're going to lose one supply oh yes um because on the back of your payout is an invoice from the corporate council for repairs made to the roof of their building after you landed your frames on it. Oh, that uh, son it is of a bitch. <laughs> very clear to you, Hex, that they are overcharging for this, but it seems like the peacekeepers just want them to take the money and shut up about it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to kill Blue. I'm going to fucking throw him off <laughs> like, the roof like, of that building. Like, I know out of character why Zach's handling the budget, but... <laughs> We have we went from four points to three, so we lost the point that we saved by you not needing to refresh your quirks. Damn. Uh, Who oh. delivers this note, this bill to us? Yeah, like how does this it's arrive? Like, you get like 
at the end of like I'm imagining every downtime you get a big list um, of like incoming materials and supplies, what? payment from the union, and then on the we back it's just like meeting. I'm sure it's somewhere. I don't know if you're at it though. Um, that's probably something to take up with the director. <laughs> oh no! But yes, there's an invoice stapled to it. That's like additional expenses, and then it's like repairs to roof, um, and then like a long complaint letter from the owner of the building. Like whining about everything, about how they had to repave everything and relevel the entire roof, um, and it's like they're clearly bitching about it uh, just to cause some misery. There's no like written up. There's no reprimand attached to it. Like your boss isn't like, "Don't do this." It's just like, "Here's why you have one less dollar this month. Make of that what you will." <laughs> Melvin uh, probably had to deliver it to us. Yeah, too. that's what I was thinking. The menu, we're like, damn it, Melvin. <laughs> yeah, Geist just throttles Melvin. <laughs> the oh, Geist would never. He would call him the wrong name and then be very dismissive. Yeah. Um, Guys, get out of here, Greg. <laughs> and your trust with the Soul Union goes up. I need to look at the Dusklight sheet. I'm looking at it right now. Our trust is currently two. Hey, uh, your trust grows up by four. Holy shit. Wow. That's dope. I will... Here. Like, it is very clear to you like both just like how you are treated and how things are going you know despite your rough talk with nyla it is very obvious that whoever is running things for the peacekeepers is very pleased with you um in a material way mm. Mm. are we the baddies yeah well sort of <laughs> it's complicated <laughs> i'm not mostly i'm a good, good soldiers follow orders that's true. That Geist doesn't feel like any of this is his fault. Yeah. I mean, Joseph was the one who's killed the children. So That is true. I mean, we, we all fucking did, like, strafing runs on the platforms. Everybody probably <laughs> yeah. killed at least a few children, all right? <laughs> yeah, well, you didn't see it, so it doesn't count. <laughs> they <laughs> oh, uh, so they don't count. How dare you? Have you ever heard of the, the Air bill. Force? <laughs> 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 Those uh, are my child kills, and I will not be denied. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. I think that is... Now we have to do entanglements. Oh, God. Here's This is the fucking chaser. What's this? <laughs> uh, luckily, the, the clusterists do not hit you more. Um, and this was like a kind of a different thing. So you're going to be rolling against the... Um, just straight up and down corporate interests on the planet. And these are like outside interests. So your status with them isn't going to be that bad. Okay. And it's going to be kind of extracted because you didn't really kill anyone oh god they changed the format of my pdf reader no execute them Tinglements. so your relationship with the squad is going to be zero or higher so you're going to roll on table c which is the best table to roll on love um, that table and you're going to roll a number of dice equal to something i love chaos so i'm going to roll this one <laughs> there's three minus the squad's relationship level with their patron so two dice um, Either way, it's a oh, it's a four or a five. No, you took the high result. Okay, embedded favorite. The squad is burdened with an NPC that a superior favors and believes needs firsthand field experience. Oh God! The NPC no. must accompany you on your next mission. <laughs> it must come Jesus back in one fucking... piece. If you refuse to take them along, take minus two trust with the faction who favors them. If the NPC <laughs> dies, take minus three trust. If they return injured, take minus one trust. The NPC is a temporary specialist cohort with a quality equal to the squad's tier, minus one, which is... So zero. zero. Yeah. That's... Guest star. Very interesting. Who is going to send you a NPC? <laughs> Blue's yeah. kid. Blue's kid. <laughs> oh, God. Can we take Blue's... the negative three? <laughs> yeah, if I was going to say, if we get Blue's kid in here, he's going to die in an industrial accident before we leave <laughs> yeah. the hangar for the first time. Yeah. I don't think. I don't think that would do that. Don't Listen, think Melvin. Even have I need you to drop my frame on this guy while you're lifting it out of the <laughs> out of the rack. All right, just drop it on. Make it seem like an accident. <laughs> okay. It's really important. <laughs> I know I can uh, trust you. What if, he, what if he's really nice though, Isaac? What if he's really nice? <laughs> and he's gonna be really nice and dead. <laughs> uh, I love this. Yeah, I think the vector minds are who. The corporate council and via the vector minds are going to be sending you someone. Oh, that's cool. I don't think you're going to get to meet them now because I have to write them. 
Yeah, that's I, I, I have a general idea what they're going to be like, and you will meet them at the beginning of your next mission. Exciting. Tyler's going to join us. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> what a twist, uh, Colin. What a twist. Hey, that'd be uh, actually, they might not be complete dead weight. The Vector Mines is another ship. Could be good. Just as you're ready to make a new friend. Could be good. Um. Okay. And now, so I have to, before we get into the your downtime actions, a couple things are, I need to ask about. Uh, the first is, what are you doing with Nat? The uh, his whose actual name you would know, Geist, is True Guild, uh, the Moon Devil. My options are to either try and leverage my contacts within the Peacekeepers to just basically get him imprisoned, imprison him personally, like chain him to the wall in my basement, <laughs> or just. Let him go and tell him that he really can't tell anybody about all the children we killed. And none of those are nice options because he has a family, right? He has like a wife and kids on Terra Brea, doesn't he? He didn't specify they're on Terra Brea, but he did specify he has them. I think I need to talk to him before I can decide what I do with him. That is probably a good call. Cool. Oh yeah, do I? I mean, that can be one of my downtime actions if you want. I've got a, I've got a lot to handle this time. <laughs> uh, I don't think put it, deciding what to do with him, unless it's something very protracted, it won't be a downtime action. Uh, but we can okay. talk about it. Let, let's just have that conversation now. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I think Geist. Geist wants to talk to him somewhere where there will not be prying eyes. So I think, like, basically, right after the briefing, he goes back out to the bay and he's like i'm taking my fucking i'm taking i'm taking it out to the range which is something he does a lot so it probably wouldn't draw any attention and he's just gonna fly the uh changeling out to like the the training range for frames and then he's going to talk to nat on the little internal box that he has that likes the little radio thingy that speaks into the prisoner compartment and what do you say that's a really good question guys like me doesn't know what to say so he sits there <laughs> And he stares at the, um, he's in his cockpit and he's just like staring at the radio thing. And then he, he like presses it and he doesn't know what to say. So he lets go. Then he presses it again and he's like, still in there. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just us now. Okay. You got any food? I haven't eaten in, uh, well, I don't have a clock, but a while. I don't know if I do actually. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get you something soon. Look, I, I, would you believe that what we did, what we just did was official corporate council business and might have done something seriously good for the war? I guess there's a, a bit of a silence. That's a loaded question. I don't know if I believe in myself. Did they, uh, what'd they say about me when I left? They said you were leaving, said you were getting off world. Figures. I had uh, reservations about the collateral damage that had been going on. <laughs> uh, and they told me either I deal with it or I get a dishonorable discharge. And so I... Found other work elsewhere. Doesn't that sound fucking familiar? Your your family, are they here? Terra Bray, I mean. Fuck no, I'm not stupid. Good. Look, they don't know you're here. They don't know... They don't know that I have you in the hold of my frame. I don't know what they would do if they did. Probably an institutional prison. Just to keep you quiet. Yeah. What are we doing here, Joker? Trying to figure a way out of this that doesn't involve you in a cell or with a bullet in your head. That'd be nice. Can I trust you? Can I really? trust you to just get the hell out. Get out of here. Go home. Find something else. 
and stay quiet? Yeah. I know what I am. I know what I've done. I don't have any illusions about it. It's a lot of people smarter than me seem to think it's necessary, and here I am caught in the middle. Yeah. Listen, I I disagree with the war, what you're doing, what the peacekeepers are doing, but I'm not exactly fighting with the clusterists. I just want to make a living and stay out of it. You let me go. I won't tell anyone about it. Find a different job. I was stupid to try to get a job here. You know, right, that if we lose this, the Oro pull everything and it's all fucked. For your family, your kids, me, everyone. Maybe. But if we have to do this <laughs> so that people are uh, comfortable, maybe there's something bigger wrong with what we're doing. Can you really say that knowing you have little ones at home? I can keep them fed. <sighs> I'm going to regret this someday, aren't I? You won't regret it. I won't make you regret it. I think you were a good guy once, guys. I think that guy is still in there. I just think I think it's complicated. It's always complicated. I don't even think my choice is the right choice, but it's what I made. And you got to make your choice too. Yeah. All right. Here's what's going to happen. <clears throat> I'm going to take a flyby to the edge of the training center. There's a hole in the fence there. Security is pretty lax. You should be able to circle around without anybody seeing you get back to the city, and then you got to disappear. If I mean, if you screw me on this, things are going to get bad, just not for me, but for a lot of people. Good people. Somehow, go be with your family, man. Get off this fucking rock. I can do that. The guy uh, still killed the feed. Do what he's going to be honest. He did be. He's going to do what he said. Give me a consort roll. Wow. Well, let's <laughs> take a look. Let's oh, take a look wow. at what my consort level is. He loves to talk. You know, that geist. Very good. My consort is zero, and I'm so stressed out that I can't push myself or I will <laughs> gain a trauma. So I'm <laughs> doing your best. This is going to be a failure for sure. Um, I don't like think I have any recourse here. Oh, wow. <laughs> A five. That's a that's a five. Oh my god, a five not, and a six. Not bad at all. Um, you have to believe oh. you're going to fail to win. Oh <laughs> my god, I can't. <laughs> oh, fucking god. Very zen. Uh, <gasps> yeah, you. I mean, I can't tell you what happens right now, but you you get a mixed success. You do let him go regardless, um, and we'll see what that mixed success is. Holy like, shit. Through that whole conversation, I was thinking to my, like, I don't, I, the whole time I was like, should I let him go? Should I just kill him? It would be very poignant if I told him I was going to let him go and then I just fucking gunned him down while he was walking away. <laughs> I made cold. the choice. That's it. That's it. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. He, you know, you do as you say. He gets out and you do not. And that's it. He's gone. For now. I could not have possibly hoped for that to go better. Yeah, I mean, with your luck. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, great. Oh. Nat is handled. Not what I thought you were going to do, but I like surprises. Uh, the other thing that happens is that your squad is... I don't know who it is. Whoever's hanging around the hangar, I guess, when this is happening. Who who'd you? It could be multiple of you. It's anyone except Geist. I'll be hanging out. How about that? Yeah, Hex is Me and Hex. buffing out the dent. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, the Captain Warhawk, a.k.a. Spud, or Captain Spud, a.k.a. Warhawk, pulls, uh, comes up to you and says, Hey, bros, uh, I just want to give you a heads up that me and the Raptors are, like, super bummed out. We didn't get a go on the last mission. We're just, like, here to help, and I just want you to know. And he goes for a fist bump. A double fist bump in this case. No, not oh, doing oh, it. Oh. Not at all. Hex 
meets it but unenthusiastically. <laughs> like it's, it's, right obligatory. it's obligatory. <laughs> Rock on. Don't mind my friend. He he doesn't. He, he gives you a nod and then he does the uh, hang loose sign at you and <laughs> surfs back to whatever he's doing. <laughs> Hex gives like the downward head nod, you know. <laughs> Uh, okay, now we can actually get to the downtime. Enough, enough drama. Yeah. Let's get to the fun part, the numbers. Down, 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 down. Okay, you all get three downtime actions as always. Well, not as always, but because of your money, you continue to get three downtime actions. Whoa. Bitching. Money, uh, did I hate to derail this. Did we do XP last time? No, we didn't, and we should. Yeah. Good you mentioned uh, it. Thank you. Okay, let's start. Uh, pilot XP. So, if you expressed your tragedy history or opening, uh, aka your backstory, um, you gain one XP. I think I did with the whole Nat situation. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. I don't think I did. I, mean, I can't think of anything that happened. I had a megafauna moment. You megafauna did. Megafauna moment. That that and, is and, megafauna moment. Ver verified. That's probably like the perfect fit for your backstory. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you struggled because of your beliefs, scars, or your vehicle's quirks, you gain one to two XP. Oh my god. My phone. I, I'll go it. get it. Don't worry. <laughs> I think I didn't do anything particularly reckless that got me screwed over, and my scars actually paid big dividends because I didn't have to be sad. Well, what about you jumped in front of, of the missile? Yeah, that was like my back. I guess that was kind of reckless. I don't know. I'll... It was pretty reckless. You you literally got so. get hit by an artillery shell. Yeah, that is true. I could have died. I'll take it. Okay, so what are we determining right now? Which is if your type? Uh, beliefs, scars, or vehicle quirks cause you to struggle? And I think yours oh. definitely did, loyal, because you took guilt, extreme guilt. Yeah, I don't think I did. Can't think of anything. I did lose two quirks, but like I don't remember struggling. Yeah, I don't think any of them caused you any difficulty. If anything, they benefited you because you were thrown. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just fucking good. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you Did address... I address a challenge with understanding or poise? Hey, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> if you address challenges with methods determined by your playbook, which is the ace, piloting or violence, empath, understanding or poise, infiltrator, stealth or evasion, and bureaucrat, procedure or management, then you get one to two XP. But I take I two. The megafauna. There was violence, there was piloting. I did them both. It's just enough to level me up. What do you, yeah, what do you think? Fine, fine. I can't argue with that. When you aren't you going to be using piloting or violence? <laughs> Smart. <laughs> uh, I think an empath. You definitely did the the critters. I think you at least need with one XP left over before I can level up. Okay, take a pity XP. <laughs> I struggled with having pity for my XP. Yeah, uh, infiltrator, stealth, or evasion, Joseph. I don't know mm -hmm. if I the only thing I can think of is like we sort of tricked them by coming down in the ship and pretending we were friends and then we burst out of there. Remember, and then you kick, kick the guy off the uh, ledge. I, I did, would, but is say, that infiltration? I would like to make the argument that me throwing him counts as evasion, kind of. It's not evasion in the sense that he wasn't evading anything, but it's like a great feat of acrobatics. I don't know. Yes, yeah. take one, take one. Okay, and the squad XP. Yeah. Uh, first one is face off against challenges above your tier, which you did not do. This was at your tier. Yes. Uh, if not, blow it. Uh, reinforce your squad's reputation or gain a new one. We didn't really reinforce our reputation because this was top fucking secret. That is true. This wasn't very daring. This was actually pretty easy, all things considered. Um, but you could gain an additional one if you'd like. Ooh. Which could be discreet. Oh, you discreet as a as a new reputation? Yeah, I would allow you to have both. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because let's do it. I, I don't want to... I know morally do something very bad, but I want you to really feel that everyone is very happy with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see us getting a reputation as the people who can quietly murder four oil derricks full of civilians. Yeah, that's hard. It's hard to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's not easy. It a, lot, a, lot a lot of, of bodies. Work. Yeah. Hey, we're um, feared. Hey, why do they get paid more? <laughs> <laughs> Kill the kids, son. 
One day. Um, <laughs> I want to grow up to kill kids just <laughs> like you. <laughs> uh, express the goals, drives, inner conflict, or instinct of the squad. Oh, so you're going to get one XP for that last one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and, that. Uh, I think uh, two XP. for. Ooh, the, yeah. Uh, the inner conflict. is There was inner conflict. Growing. What do you know, guys? That's another... That's a squad level up. Whoa! And then execute a successful battle, delivery, or rescue operation. This was a battle. You do get another XP there. So it'll roll I think over. It's wasted. Oh, it don't. Okay. I'll let it roll over. Come on. I'm nice. I'm Come nice. On. Um, so yes, you are going to. I need to remember what you get for leveling up. I know most of you aren't interested in it, but Isaac is. So Isaac, if you want to talk about it? <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> so uh, we, let's hear it. Go. Go ahead. Yeah. So we can either gain. Uh, Okay, so this is me going off of Blades in the Dark Memory, but I think it is correct, and I'll double-check myself between sessions. We can either get one new special ability or two squad upgrades, bearing in mind that we're already going to get one squad upgrade for free. Um, so just for context, the last upgrade we got was Reavers, so if you're pushing yourself uh, basically in a fight with a vehicle, you only exhaust a quirk if you get a good roll, like if you get a four or higher, uh, which is pretty cool. The... Other options are um, uh, formation. When a group action is taken with a vehicle action, every participant may spend one stress, and anybody who does gets plus one D. So we get like Ginyu Force Squad Tactics, which is pretty cool. <laughs> we can get Scorched. Okay, I don't know about this one. Scorched Earth, the scale of your conflict is large, and that's tolerated. You don't lose trust when you cause property damage. I feel like being able yeah. to cause collateral with impunity is kind of against the themes of the game, so I'm kind of leery on that. Yeah, I feel like we're not one. worried I about Reaver. that. Reaver was sick. You yeah, have Reaver's just we sick. have Reaver, yeah, I believe. Um, and you can also get... Go ahead. I was just saying custom work. I'm just reading these now. I'm looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's all good. on the squad sheet. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, like, I was gonna say, for the custom work one, take plus one D when you engineer one of your squad... Do, do, is that like forever or do we need to do that before every mission? That's forever. Yeah, so oh, that's okay. like, I think that's for any any time that Geist has to repair the vehicles, right? Yeah, that's engineer. Geist is the only one who has it and he's been doing most he's been leading most of the repair work. So I'll remind you, Gopher got an upgrade to his engineer ability. So now you he can do it with two dice instead of one. So this is oh, three. I read this wrong. Never mind. That's fucking that's really um, good. Um yeah. Uh, also, you can take uh, ability from any other playbook as well. Yeah, maybe this is something. How about how about this? This is another. We'll kick the can down the road and talk about it at the beginning of the next episode. Yeah. Um, yep. I'll, I'll I'll put to, I'll put something together. I'll, I'll put together a <laughs> spreadsheet for the gang for all these upgrades because I do want to shop around a little bit. Fun. I want to make a note in the chat that you need to have one squad upgrade and one ability or three squad upgrades because yes. you get the bonus upgrade for your success. Uh, that is the XP done. I don't yes. know why that wasn't on my list of things to do. Or was it? No, it wasn't. Um, okay. Thank you for reminding me. Now you guys can do your individual downtime actions. I will remind you Yay. what is going on. Hex, you have a big hard drive full of information which presumably is very important um which you said you might want to work on joseph you already have your ai torture project which completed um mm -hmm. you can make a new one to go towards a new clock in your long-term project if you'd like um i should ask you have you sent over the information to gold house like the preliminary hard drive that the Soul Union gave you to give to them. That's what I was going to ask you. Did you want to do that in the vignette, or should we just decide that now? In my mind, we could do a scene where if you give it to them in person, um, the vignette would be what happens after that. Like once they verified that data, you would have like a whole thing. Okay, well, let's just say then that I, I've done that. I've given them okay. the stuff. Cool. Yeah. Like you, you send it, um, you get a little like, very subtle message back, like message received. Um, great. And then, Loyal, you have a prisoner who you have been trying to save, uh, which you could work on that or, you know, really anything. Um, and, you know, guys, you know what's going on with you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Who wants to go first? Anyone got oh. some stress they got to relieve? Geist yeah. actually does. For real? Geist? Geist? A group bar visit? Anyone? 
let's do it. Let's actually do it. I'm yeah. gonna go get hammered again. This is the first that time way. I think Geis has actually participated because he doesn't use a lot of strills. Yeah, I want to talk to my squad mates anyway. So it's if perfect. we roll bad, <laughs> we can have a bar fight and we'll be great. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, beat okay, robot. so you have to pair off. Um, you have to like. This is the the more clumsy part of the stress relief is. You have to choose who you are relieving it with, each of you. And yeah. this that doesn't have this isn't bi-directional. It's like Hex can do it with Joseph, but you, Joseph can do it with Loyal, like that. Yeah. yeah. Loyal only has three stress, also. He doesn't want to go to the bar. <laughs> if he gets invited, he says yeah. no. He Fuck can yeah. still go, he just doesn't have to take the egg. Unless he, he likes water. specifically Does he doesn't do want to go. <laughs> he specifically doesn't want to go. If you like go to ask for him, he's up in the caldera. He's like swimming laps around the fucking lake. Well, <laughs> something's on so, his mind. Caldera Lake is 10 hours away from the city. Oh. Just so you know, there are other places to swim. Of course. Okay. Did he stutter? <laughs> I'm 10 hours away from the city. He's going. <laughs> Worthy, I need to go for a swim. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow. Uh-huh. Uh, hey, I mean, like, that could that could be a thing you do. Like, that could definitely be a downtime activity. I would accept that. If I get um, two, that's one of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... Okay, um, so who's going with who? So I can write it down. That's, I thought that Geist was, would go with Loyal, but Loyal doesn't want to go. I don't think Geist wants to really talk to Hex right now after the the disagreement <laughs> in the debrief, and he still is kind of afraid of Joseph. <laughs> well, Joseph is, like, is very interested in guys. <laughs> so I think fine. I'm he'll, picking you. <laughs> yeah, if, if Joseph asks Geist to go out, he'll, he'll be... If he'll think about it, he'll begrudgingly talk, then he'll he'll go. Yeah, he'll go. Okay. Okay. And hmm. so it has to be a player character? It has has to be a player character. Okay. Then probably Joseph. I'm down. Okay. There right, you go. So back Joseph. To back. Uh is Joseph relieving any stress or are you just gonna be there to hang out? Uh, I am definitely stress. relieving. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Who is your main reliever? Uh I think Geist. I think it will be Geist. Okay. Geist, Joseph, Hex, Joseph, Joseph, Geist. Uh, okay. You are going to cut loose. You're going to roll dice equal to the number of ticks in your connection clock with that pilot. Um, which, in it's this one. game... Yeah. Um, so, let's start with Geist. Oh, four. That's actually decent. Okay. Nice. So, are we? Do you guys want to do a, a group vignette, or do you want to break this up into like individual ones? Uh, like we ro- ro- I, I don't I, know. I'm, I'm down to do individual if you guys want. There's yeah, like let's uh, do it. Sure. Like okay. Uh, Geist and Joseph, what do you talk about? <laughs> so this will be Geist mainly doing the conversation, right? Because it's his thing. It can go either way, but Geist is the one who's relieving his stress. Yeah, I don't, like, we we could do the two at the same time. Like, I don't know if they're, like, we could just have it be, like, one scene for both stress reliefs, because I don't think, you know, it makes sense to do, sure. like, two completely separate conversations for kind of the same thing. Yeah, that's that's fine. Then I think we're both sitting at the bar, I imagine. Um, Joseph has ordered the same amount of bottles as last time. Uh, and is just mixing them together and handing you a glass, <laughs> and he has his own. Um, yeah. But he is he is sitting next to you, and he says, I'm very glad you joined me today, Geist. I wanted to speak to you after the last mission. Geist takes the drink, and he, he can't drink them, so he pours them into his little syringe and injects them into his torso, and he's like, Yeah, I almost didn't. <clears throat> Listen, you um, you were right to suspect me earlier. When speaking about Gold House. Yeah, look. Listen, I just, I want to confirm and tell you that this is, I am still loyal to the Peacekeepers. I am working undercover through guidance of Nyla to infiltrate Gold House. That is why I am connected with them. And what benevolent guidance it is. He grabs another drink and slams at home well that's what? listen that's the issue um after last mission it's difficult to trust nyla now wouldn't you agree 
I'd say it's difficult to trust any of them. I mean, look, what we did, that's... It's regrettable, but it's not... I don't know, you, you read books, you know anything about war in an academic sense? I only know strategies. Well, I guess your strategies probably don't tell you that this is what war is, you know? It's orphan children, it's kids taken from their parents. That's the reality of it, whether we like it or not. And it... There's no point. Not that I suspect you even do, but beating yourself up about what it is you were told to do. We don't make the decisions. We just turn the fucking crank. And he slams another drink. Of course. Yes. Guys, if you ever have any reservations, you can let me do the work if you need to. I... I don't know. Would that really make me any different than, you know, the people up top sending us to do this shit? I, I don't think so. I don't think so either. But you wouldn't have to look at it. <laughs> I'm more worried about the others. I mean, I was. I don't have a read on Hex anymore. I don't think I understand where his head's at. He seems loyal. I doubt he would betray us or the peacekeepers. Um, but it seems no. that his combat effectiveness is getting better in missions. Yeah. No, that's that's not what I mean. Look, when I first got put on this squad, I thought, you know, Hex, he's a pencil pusher. I thought he'd choke up, you know, but he didn't. And uh, now I think... Fuck, I think it's the other way. I don't think he's really any different. In September, Bluth, when it comes down to it, he'd, you know, massacre every man, woman, and child on the Brea for the bottom line. I guess that's why they hired him. <laughs> yes, I suppose we're all similar in that way, except for Joseph kind of looks around. Loyal. Yeah, Loyal's not here. I imagine he's taking it pretty hard. I mean... You know, we did some bad stuff, but you or I or even Hex, we can feel the emotional feedback the way an empath can. You know? I used to no. know one pretty well. It's, uh, you know, war is different for them. It's worse, really. I can't imagine. Now Joseph takes his drink. Oh. Hey, you wanna... I want to show you something. Of course. Geist is going to, um, he's going to get like a couple of bottles to go and then he's just going to take them out to like some back alley and then chug the bottles and then take turns throwing them up in the air and shooting at him with Geist's sidearm even though they're, well, I mean, Geist is hammered now. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph is definitely joining you. <laughs> <laughs> That's just him blowing off steam. He's just having fun. He's just throwing yeah. the liquor bottles up and you know, sometimes he hits one, but most of the time he does. He, he's going to throw them. Joseph throws them up, but he throws them up in the exact same angle every time. And you have to tell him <laughs> to change. <laughs> <laughs> they just keep curving up. And you keep Great shot, guys. Good job. <laughs> I don't patronize me. Take a look at this one. <laughs> like holds the gun behind his head and misses completely and like shoots out the window of the building. <laughs> Joseph picks up a glass bottle, throws it against the wall. You got it. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> All right, I think that's it. Yeah. That's um, so, Joseph, you have to roll however many checks you have with Geist to see how much stress you relieve. Okay. I have just one. So, is that 1d6? Yeah. Uh, R1 d6. Five. That's five. very, very good. Oh, I'm back to normal, baby. Uh, did you have five stress total i had six <laughs> okay oh good good, good. Uh, just checking if you didn't overindulge uh, no, no, all no, right. no 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 uh yeah so both of you check a mark with the other one Ooh, buddy does buddy. that make it does that make a, a relationship belief level two yes wow Wait. uh yeah yeah it is so yeah. now when you aid each other it'll cost two stress but you'll get two bonuses 
Oh, oh that's oh god, cool. I'm gonna be throwing at walls again. <laughs> I know it's coming up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Okay>. Joseph. <laughs> now we should do Hex and Joseph. Beautiful. What? What is? Uh, do you want to roll that hex? Yeah. What am I rolling? Uh, however many checks you have with your relationship with Mirage. Senor Friendly Mirage. are you with me, Brian? Two. I have two. Whoa. So two d six. Yeah. Four. Oh. That's not good. No, it's actually two because you take the highest. <laughs> so you're two stress. Oh Fuck. no. Well, it is. It makes sense in character. <laughs> 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 he's he's under a lot of stress. <laughs> what are you at now for stress? Three. Oh, that's not bad. That's what I got to as well. I was redlining. I don't know. It gets scary. <laughs> oh, scary. All right. Today. So, what's this scene look like? Uh, I mean, Joseph. When do you think this takes place, Mister Master of uh, Socializing? I think maybe it happens before are you at the bar maybe before uh geist like this could happen before our conversation because at the end of that one we were <laughs> throwing bottles in the air so. yeah <laughs> yeah let's let's just say hex and you met beforehand and keep it mm. ambiguous because i don't want to think too hard about that but <laughs> yeah hex is upset so this is probably shortly after our meeting yeah yeah i'd probably walk in so you already at the bar yeah, Hex is already half a glass deep. You know, that's one stress right there. The other <laughs> Joseph uh, still walks over and sits down. You've already started. I mean, got to cover lost ground. It's been a long day. <laughs> there has been a lot, hasn't it? Um, were you... I know it's difficult to say, but after that last mission... Are you okay? Am I okay? Of course I'm okay. I'm more worried about the squad. <laughs> the squad? Yes. You like, had no reservations about what we did then. Tell, tell me this. Tell me this, Joseph. What, do you think what we did made no sense? Because I feel like our friend just isn't seeing the big picture here. Joseph lets out a rare sigh, a robotic sigh. <laughs> and he says, um, I think it made all the sense. It, it, I assume it lined up with everything that we had to do. My only qualms is why were we the ones to do it? Why the subterfuge? Why can't they trust us? If we need to do the job and we want to do it efficiently, we need all the information and we should be doing more pressing tasks than just helping out those guys it made perfect sense why they did because they knew we wouldn't have done it as well as we did otherwise we're not just hammers for that hammer and nails we we have reservations you saw those reservations in that room that is true yes but managing people sucks <laughs> aren't we better than this aren't we tasked for more difficult missions than killing civilians on oil rigs I wouldn't say we're above any work when we're this spread thin I'm sure you're familiar with everything Nyla showed us so I feel like it's a tough case to make otherwise unless you could pull a few couple trillion out of your back pocket I don't know what inflation's like in this universe <laughs> <laughs> that works for me yeah. <laughs> that I cannot do my friend he takes a drink This sucks. <laughs> he just says, and he finishes the rest. Joseph just immediately it. starts patting him on the back. <laughs> That's a good ending. <laughs> okay. Um, before we get into the action, so, Wyzak, do you have a heart out at nine? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, then, why don't we start doing downtime actions? Um, do yeah, you want yeah. us to do yours first? Geist? Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, I think mine are going to be pretty, so I have two left. I have two level two damages on my frame, so I'm going to be uh, engineering with my man, Melvin, for sure. <laughs> um, I think at this point, Geist has discovered that his name is not actually Greg. But um, does he keep calling him Greg? Probably not. 
He wants to be nice to him since he cares. Guys cares about his friend a lot. Um, so his thing is it's two dice now. Uh, y- th- yeah, two, two dice. Yeah, unless we end up taking that other thing, but I don't, I don't know. I feel like we probably won't. Okay, so here's the first one. That's probably not a six. Oh no, that's a six and a one. Okay, uh, is that three ticks? Yep, three ticks. Let me over pair clock. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, okay, uh, so I'm going to do it again for my other one. That's really useful. So even if this one goes poor... Oh, God, that's Another a critical. Six. That's yeah. a critical. That's two sixes. So <gasps> I would just say clear the rest, uh, uh, all the damage. My fucking boy! Okay. Yeah, and I think Melvin... Melvin, so, like, the main damage you had was that your legs were, like, really fucked up from the, like, mono wire whip, right? So yeah, severed hydraulics, and then the, uh, the other level two harm was from intercepting the howitzer shell at the end. Oh, yeah, right. He, he, <laughs> Melvin, like... <laughs> he, he, like, is very, he's very keen, this, this boy. Um, <laughs> he, like, looks over the damage from the howitzer shot, and, and he, like, you see him, like, looking back toward Texas, like, giant cannon, and, like, he, like, this looks between them a few times, and he's like... <laughs> Yeah, I uh I think I know what you need for this. <laughs> uh, and you get the perfect tools for repairing this kind of uh damage. Man. I imagine after the damage has been repaired, there's like a rare moment where guys like claps him on the back. Damn fine work, bro. Looks great, looks good as new. He gets like some legitimate praise. He's happy. For the first mile, <laughs> so long. <laughs> That's my fucking boy. This is the Melvin glow up arc, uh, for sure. So new gunner. Yeah, I have no actions left, but you can spend points, right? You have a third one. That was two actions, and then one for cutting loose. Oh yeah, you're right. So that's um, all three. Uh, yes, you could. Also, uh, Tex, you want to cook the books? Oh, oh please yeah, yeah. cook the books. Yes, sir. Spend two stress in a downtime activity to gain an additional supply and roll. Okay, cool. What do I roll for this? And I got two stress now. Uh, you are going to roll. I think you just re-roll the uh, the roll we made before three three d six, and you get Let's that go. much back. money. Six money. <laughs> okay, that makes supply. that's huge. Jesus okay, Christ. so we have nine. That's good because I have some shit that I want to do. Um. I want to. So first of all, I want to just spend one to take another downtime action. I got to start. I got to st- I got to keep my eye on the prize here. I got to start looking into what I need to start. Like, basically, I need to start a project of how I'm going to defeat retribution. I need to learn everything that I can about him. Um, And I would hope like to roll at least one dive for it so i was wondering can i is it too much of a stretch to use no command wouldn't really work eh? if i'm trying to like basically strong arm people in the peacekeepers to give me all of our privilege data about him or something is that like too stupid um mm-hmm. that depends on what you roll i can see the argument there okay because like you have you have fairly valid reasoning to be like we fucking got attacked by this guy. I need everything you have. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Give me that intel. It. Yeah. <laughs> How many ticks should this clock have? To I, I'm a little bit unfamiliar with the um. So the general thing I've been going for is your first project is always going to be a four step clock. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'm going to just put learn more about retribution. Okay. Yeah, so I will roll one die. I got a four. That's a partial success, which I think is two ticks. Two ticks. Yep. Yeah, you uh you get started on it. You I mean who are you yelling at? Who are you commanding, would you say? It's like some I... clerk? Yeah, yeah. Basically just like the pencil pushers to start. Cause I imagine that we have some data that's like semi publicly available just from like, you know, conflicts that he's been in and uh stuff of that nature. Um, yeah, you get some, um, you get a lot of data that you miss when you were sleeping, um, like other sightings of him, how his frame has changed. Um, it's, 
the one thing you notice, which I'll give you now, is that the range of, like, his appearances has increased. Like, he was used to be only spotted in, like, a very small area of the Riverlands, and now people are spotting him every now and then farther and farther out. Okay. Uh, okay. Great. Uh, who wants to go next? Um, I actually, also, before we go, I'm going to spend uh, two more. Is it one point per removing a junked gear? Yes, one material to unjunk a gear, uh, okay. which I think some other people have to do as well. Yes, I'm going to unjunk two, but we still have six points, and we also have two personnel, so we everybody else should have a little bit to play with still. Great. Um, Hex and Loyal, do you want to unjunk your... In Hex, you both have junked rack of missiles. Hex misses them. He wants them. <laughs> he wants them. Back. What about you, Loyal? Mm, what happens if I unjunk them? What does it cost? Uh, one material. And then you How can... How many material do we have? Uh, Hex! And we can only bank four, so you guys collectively need to spend at least two. Sure. On, the books there's no downside. Themselves. I'll do it. <laughs> spend it. Great. Do I just mark it with an X, or do I just wipe it? You wipe uh, it, and you can declare something new in its place later. Yeah. Or the okay. same thing. Listen, buddy, me and the missiles go way back. <laughs> How's the collateral going to damage itself? <laughs> so is that two two more gone for you guys mm -hmm. to clear your ship? Nice, nice, nice. We got four left. Um, one thing worth noting is I actually looked up. It is free to move from weak to stronghold. So you're now a tier one a strong faction. Or oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Um, okay, let's get into downtime actions uh, for the others. Who is doing what? I'll call on someone if I have to. I have to go oh, get my notes app. Um, I can go pretty quick, probably. Sure, what do you want to do, Joseph? I want to work on my skill, because I want to finally upgrade my resolve. So I am going to do that. Okay. On the thing. Forget what it's called. Train. <laughs> Who would have known? Uh, all right. So do I need a roll for that? You just get um, one XP. It's not very efficient. Yeah, you just get one XP for one downtime action. One to one. Oh. Uh, That's not well. very good. We can get... So we have to get um, squad upgrades. One of the There are squad upgrades for um, basically improving the training action for every playbook. Um which that just gives makes it two to one, so you get two XP per downtime action instead of one. Yeah, if you I want that to be what you got as like a bonus from the peacekeepers. That I would like to something. train my resolve at some point as well. So I think that the is that what you were going to train, Joseph? Was resolve? Yeah, I I'm like about to level it up. I I need to, so that's why I was you need to. Do. Yeah, I I want to do that eventually as well because uh, Geist is really bad at anything that doesn't involve killing people with a robot. Um, and I need to diversify them a little bit if I'm ever <laughs> going to fill these uh, project clocks. So yeah, could we can tentatively, we, yeah, we can check down the yeah, resolve that's training. That's good. Well, so, here's the thing I wanted to ask, Colin, is mm -hmm. I have my three options. Command, consort, sway. In, yes. my, uh, in my gold house infiltration, like, are you going to make those, like, enemies so it would be smarter to sway? Or would consort work because technically they're, like, allies in that moment? It depends on what your approach is working with them. If you're like okay. trying to really lie to them a lot, sway. But if you mm -hmm. are trying to kind of buddy up with them and we don't do like lies of omission, consort, I, I think both will give you an equal chance as long as you don't get in too hot of water. Sure. So like, this is like a tentative ruling, but consort will get you less progress, but will be safer. And it's, it's not likely to get you out of a bad situation. Sway is more likely to get you into a bad situation, but you might have more effect with it. Yeah, I kind of want to do consort only because I'm thinking like I also like I'm never going to be in a situation where I could talk down a bad guy. They're going to immediately shoot me, you know, <laughs> so it's yeah. like you I feel like the people I'm talking to that I need to make friends with are my allies. So I might do consort. OK, sure. Yeah. Good drink. There we go. Yeah. So you get a new you have a like training station now somewhere in your hangar. Um, brand spanking new, very useful. I don't know what it would look like. Maybe some sort yeah. of like digital training suite, how to win <laughs> friends and influence people. 
It's a hollow deck. Yeah. Here's a PDF, Joseph. Oh. <laughs> Be wary that you do have those uh, long term product projects and goals. Yeah. Um you can train, but just know there is Yeah. That, you that should always a good rule of thumb, I would say, is to always spend at least one action working on your projects because, like, who knows how many downtimes we're even going to get before everybody dies or, or we make such bad choices and roles that we're forced into <laughs> some ignoble end uh, for the campaign. Nice. So just always keep an eye on your long-term projects. I would say I would say, if you have one on the go and you have an action you're not sorry, just do it. Just dump it in there. Can I do the hard drive? Can he do the Can hard drive? Can I do drive? the hard drive, actually? Oh, is that like yes, sir. If you guys want to alternate, that's fine, too. Yeah, go ahead. Because I need to think about my long-term project if I'm going to do one. Sure. I've done um, one. Uh, there will be a four-step clock see. that you should probably put on your, your sheet, Brian. Yes, sir. Long-term project, uh, analyze hard drive. I think, how are you going about this? Uh, uh, how am I going about this? Um, well, I shouldn't bring Joseph in because she said don't do that. <laughs> hey, buddy. Uh, Sorry, ChatGPT, I can't use you. <laughs> Hex is going, how about he ropes in his good friend, what's what's the guy's name again? The fucking co-worker? Glint? Gisho Beepo? Gwent, yeah. <laughs> Beepo, yeah. Yeah, motherfucking Beepo. Um, Beepo. Whatever the pug's name was. Uh, what if he asks him for help? Like, have you ever had to recover corrupted files or something like that? And that's how this goose chase starts. Sure. So you're, right. you're trying to angle for a sway or consort. Yes. Yes. Sure. Yes, I, I'm good at consort. Hey, I get to use that one. You would like to implicate your cohort. Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. That's uh, how yeah. you know someone can be trusted. Roll, <laughs> roll me that. Click. Is this, what position is this? Uh, you don't have position for this. It's just yeah. uh, a, a roll. Just a roll. Should I just leave Fortune. it? Okay. Yeah, just leave it. <laughs> All right. You're going to get two ticks in that project. He knows a guy. Um, okay. Yeah, Glint helps you. It's much easier with two people. Um, you start churning through this massive amount of data. Um, Glint has like started throwing away some things that are clearly just like um, logistics receipts that you don't need. They're slowing down the whole process. Um, and yeah, you can uh, do that again if you'd like, or you can do something else. I would love to do it again, but doesn't that use up our last material? No, oh, it these actions it doesn't cost are anything. free. Oh shit, let's do it again. Because you get three free actions, so this is your third. Oh, let's go. All right, all right, Blint. We we roll in two again. <laughs> we roll in two again. Glint, I know, I know, I don't want you working after hours, but we really um, need to get makes it worth your while. Oh, oh wait, no, I... that's too much. Yeah, that was snake. Um, that <laughs> you can spend a material to increase that effect if you'd like. Uh, we got otherwise. four in the bank. I would like to do that, but I don't want to spend our money without the or team. Or you could spend a personnel. Oh yeah, we got we got two hard personnel that are like locked in. We can get rid of one of those easy. Okay. Great. So that completes that part of the project. All right. Is that an extra one progress on the clock or both? It's two. Two, so you because have... you increased the effect. You increase, oh. increase. So this isn't like a part of your drive. So you're not going to get any drive sections per. S I think you're going to get one incidentally. Um, cause your what is your current drive? It's to figure out who sent your brother to his death, or like who killed him. Yeah. Um, I can't tell you why, but this does make progress towards that. So make one check in your your drive clock, which is I don't know where they are. No, I found drive? it. I found it. Okay. Yeah. But um, there's two clocks, like. Yes, there's two. One you just click one check. That's it. Um, okay, and then as far as the data files, you sift through a lot of the junk data, and what you're left with is a lot of addresses and a lot of shipments to those addresses that are very suspicious. A lot of unmarked um, things or like code words for materials. Um, and you also discover very strangely, like this is the one thing I'll give you, is that the things they are importing that you like are not in code names or anything are really bizarre like 
uh, old light bulbs and like ammunition that hasn't been used in like hundreds of years like extremely old shit like just junk which you wouldn't want to import onto a planet in the first place um so it's kind of a head scratcher um but that is where we'll leave you with that wow they're still buying nine millimeter in this timeline that can't be right <laughs> oh my god um so uh, i'm gonna add, give you another long-term project clock which is going to be an eight-step clock Woo! which is going to be called find warehouse 27 d Ooh, okay. which is where all of these things are ending up that is referenced across multiple files but it is extremely hard to figure out where it actually is okay um and the security around these files is not to be under understated like this level of obfuscation for junk importing is extremely suspicious especially after what uh your contact told you about this and like how people died for this and how like someone gave up their life so that you could have this information. Death Star. Death Star, Death Star baby. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm afraid the deflector shields quite <laughs> operational by the time your friend a lot, of a lot of reporters died to get us this information. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so we have... Joseph has one left. Loyal, you have three because you didn't take the um, the cut loose. Oh shit! Yeah. Three. Okay, yeah, do, 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 do you have some harm, loyal? If you want to do that, yeah. First. I wanted to figure out how to recover that. Um, you could go to a doctor. You go to Surrey Grace to do therapy. Um, or you could like talk to someone else for therapy if you want. In the ten-hour ride with Worthy. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that could be your, that could be your therapy. Is like trying to just go for a swim where it all happened. Yeah. It's going to do very long laps around this crater. Isn't Caldera Lake like the size of a small ocean? Yeah, you cannot do uh, laps around <laughs> Caldera Lake because it is literally <laughs> trying, to, like, trying to swim through the entire Atlantic. Do laps is it around the, the, Atlantic. the largest body of water on this planet that I have access to? Yes. Yeah, that's why he's going there. <laughs> it's it, 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 it been laps, seen. exactly. Just trying to be in a very large place and lose himself for a bit. Here's what I'll argue for this point. is I think that swimming around may be very effective for you, um, but it's going to be how much patience Worthy has to wait for you to swim. <laughs> um, that makes so sense. You, you can roll sway in this case. <laughs> okay, I will try to sway Worthy into just hanging out at this bumfuck place. <laughs> hey! Okay, so that is going to be your healing die, so that means you're going to get two ticks on the healing clock, mm -hmm. uh, which you can find to the right of your arm. So, you can roll it again, or you can spend, I think, personnel to increase its effect by one. Which I wouldn't recommend. No, you have the actions to burn. You might as well use them. Yeah, I'll just roll it again. Yeah, roll again. This is a sway again. <laughs> yeah, sway. Like you're saying, like, just five more minutes. Just oh. five more minutes in the pool, <laughs> please, worthy. Oh. So that's, that's, well, that's just one more. No. You get one tick. He's like, yeah. literally five <laughs> more minutes. Um, so you have another Worth. action if you want. Do you have anything else you want to do? Because we do have one point of personnel that you could spend to bump that up to two and two, which I think would be enough to heal it, right? I'm going to be yes. working on my yeah. drive clock during one of my downtimes that I have left. Yeah. Sure, so yeah. Whatever so, else that should be. Yeah, yeah. Let's spend, right. we'll spend that personnel and then that's two and two and you, you heal your guilt. All right. Your guilt well, this is guilt. level two guilt. So it goes, down, down, two. It goes right. down to lingering guilt. Mm -hmm. That's easier. Um, yeah, you managed to, with a little bit of bribing, um, maybe like a big bottle of whiskey for Worthy, <laughs> talk him into it, and he's like, okay, this, we're not doing this again. That's not his voice. That was, like a, that was kind of a Pico voice. Um, <laughs> She's back, baby! It's like, we're not doing this again, okay? <laughs> I, I just, I just needed this just once. It's hard <laughs> being stuck in that pod, you know? I don't. <laughs> no, you don't, do you? Let's go. I just imagine Loyal swimming in like a, the 
skeleton of a child in a dress like floats by the foreground of the screen. <laughs> I don't see that. I don't see that. <laughs> okay. Um uh drive clock and long term projects, are they separate? Are they separate things? Uh long term projects, if they are about your drive, like doing more AI torture or another AI project, would sure. contribute to your a uh, drive clock. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like I want to do my if I'm doing a thing for my drive clock, it would be a long term project. Yes. In yes. Okay. Cases. And the other thing was, uh, so I completed one of these long term projects, and that was four. If I do another one, is it going to be six? Um, what's your drive? Or is it depend? Uh, I, oh, uh, I just have one. Mm, I'll give you another four in this case. Well, depending uh, on what it is, really. Yeah, that's the the thing that I wanted might be a little bit of a stretch, <laughs> but I okay. thought I'd bring it up, and that was I was wondering if Joseph could attempt in a very tiny way to see if he could copy himself onto a computer <laughs> make a copy of himself is that too <laughs> that far seems like some sort of the sort of thing that the non-human persons division will be very very upset about <laughs> nah, i don't they don't even know about this <laughs> the emergent personality division there are things on your body that are in place to prevent exactly that um <laughs> you can look into getting around them that could be the project seeing what your options are there Actually, yeah, that would be a thing. Is there a way I could actually learn what has been blocked out from my last kind of like fiddling with? What, remember when they like put me to sleep? Yeah, absolutely. Because I noticed there was some blocks in my brain, so I could try. Yeah, to, there like, were work blocks in your brain, and something had reformatted you in a weird way. Yeah, I want to know what that is. So that'll sure. be my project. Absolutely. Take a. Uh, that's gonna. What do you want to roll for that? Uh, I was gonna say interface. Cause I'm just doing a little bit of sure. computer work. Take plus one die to that. All righty. And this plus one die, just to say explicitly, is because of the devil's bargain you made last time you interfaced. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not ominous. Uh, don't worry. Everything's going to be just fine. So interface plus one. Mm -hmm. Risky standard, correct? Yep. Mom, big money. No. Yeah, that's a six. <laughs> it's a six. Critical success. So you're going to get three dots in this new long-term project, which I think... Uh, what do you want to call this long-term project? Investigates modifications? Yeah, we could just say that. Yeah. Um, right. Joseph Jr., you'll come soon. Don't worry. <laughs> you're in the uh, the digital space. Um, and you're investigating yourself. Uh, like You're plugged into some hardware, I imagine. Um, mm -hmm. And you... Like, it's, it's there. Like All the blocks are there. You can't get around them. It's, it, it's intentionally hard to do. Um, and then... The lights in the room flicker, and then it's kind of like all at once. You can see everything, like every one of the functions that's blocked off from you. Like you see like the, the blocks of code and the restrictions that stop you from transferring files out of you. You see all these like the very back doors to like stop you from resisting commands, uh, like the kind of would you kindly command that uh, Whitecliff gave you. Um <laughs> All of it is, like, obvious to you, and what is perhaps the most disconcerting thing is, like, you're a pretty good interfacer, good coder, but you didn't do this at all. Something else did. <laughs> and you see it, like, <laughs> go ahead without you, almost, um, and make a copy of you. Like, you see all the file, like, every file inside of you get copied, and then get uploaded to some, like, server somewhere. And like it just errors out. Um, uh oh! So no, upgrade... Joseph Junior, come back! <laughs> so I'm gonna upgrade this to a critical success, and I'm going to ask you, Joseph, what is one thing you'd like to be able to do that has been blocked off from you? Well, becoming a level three AI is probably too far. <laughs> yeah, so I like, can't do that. This won't like fully change you, but like what the the they've stopped you from doing, like things like, you know being able to put parts of you somewhere else. Maybe not like a full duplicate right now, but sure. this could give you progress towards that. This could turn off the code phrases that they have, which disable you as well. One thing, and this is like presented you as a choice. There is mm -hmm. a presence here with you, and it's like saying, here's what they did to you. Take one thing away. Okay, I see. I would like the ability to kill guys. <laughs> kill yeah, like, that's, 
in like high terms, we can turn it into mechanics if you want something like that. Like if you want a free level right now, you could have that. Uh, I kind of want to do something narratively because I really want to work on this Suped situation. Sure. Um, and I'm trying to think what the smartest, the, the code phrases thing is pretty good. What was the other one? Um, like limited ability to actually oh, yeah, copy your, myself your brain in other systems, like not through an interface, but actually like inhabit them. Um, is there like a way I could, well, they wouldn't know that immediately. I was gonna say like remove tracking, but then they would know. Um, you could spoof it. Oh, like you, you could send them a tracking signal where you actually aren't. I or, like, yeah, here's what yeah. I was gonna, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say just the ability to turn it off. So like you can, or like the ability to spoof it when you want to, like they don't know it's compromised until, you know, they go looking for you somewhere and you're not. Yeah. There. The the thing that I, in most basic terms is like, if I want to do future sneaky shit, uh, I would like to make a choice now where it'll make them make it harder for them to know that I'm doing that, you know? So sure. would that basically be it? Yes. You can get root access to all your, your tracking stuff. So you can completely edit it in however you want, turn it off, say you're somewhere else. Um, and the perfect personalities division yeah. will not know where that is. So that means like next time I am doing something sneaky, I know at least I have that benefit, right? Yes. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I'm going with that then. Great. Um, like Thanks, a, Robo God. Like a little angelic hand on your shoulder. You see that like part of you just open up. You have full control to it. It's like having a new muscle you didn't even know exists. A second penis, if you will. Ooh. Nice. Uh, in. Staying in. I have a meta question. Not even a meta question. Does Joseph feel any trepidation about the fact that there's probably a rogue AI that's just kind of loose inside the peacekeeper systems? Because this is not the first little mysterious power flicker that we've seen. <laughs> yeah. I think Joseph, in his brain, if I'm playing as Joseph, he is trying to be tactical in this situation, but he does he is denying the fear that he has in his heart that like if he if he does anything to piss this thing off, it'll kill him. So he's just going to do whatever it tells him to do. <laughs> and he's just picking something because he thinks that's the correct choice to get this thing appeased, you know. Oh, good sure. shit. It gives you an impression of happiness, um, oh. which is, I don't know what happiness feels like to Joseph, um, but I think you know what it is when it gives it to you. It's pleased sure. with you. Um, and then <laughs> I guess... In a very digital way, something gets added to your address book. Like, it's kind of hard to, to conceptualize, even to me, because I'm a human being. But like, <laughs> instead of someone telling you their name, it's just like they're in your head. Like, imagine if you saw a stranger and you knew their name. Uh, okay, sure. So that's added to your head, and you know that this thing is called contrition. Contrition. Here we go, baby. We're getting that good. sounds <laughs> way too much like the name of a fucking virtue. I don't like nah. that at all. <laughs> totally God fine. fucking damn it. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> and to those listening at home, contrition is a state of feeling remorseful or penitent, particularly in a religious function. I'm a robot, okay? That doesn't oh, apply to me. Man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really that, that is... So congratulations <laughs> on your success, sir. Thank you. <laughs> right, what a success it was. I doubt, I'm excited to figure out what the fuck is going to happen to me. <laughs> okay. Loyal. Oh boy, is it time? Yeah. Time. However you want to do it. Cool. So you go to Guy's house and you have a shotgun. Go to Guy's house <laughs> and have a dolphin shotgun. That shoots is it dolphin. held in the hands of the exopod? Yeah, it's the only hands I have, man. What do you got? <laughs> what do you want me to say? Um, I want to spend some points to help me with whatever rolls I'm going to be making when I go talk to Maze. Yeah, so you can spend, once you roll it, you can spend it afterwards to increase your effect. Oh, it's afterwards. Cool. Yeah, so if you like your roll, you don't need say to say what I'm doing beforehand, or just wait? <laughs> Give us an impression. I'm trying to gain Maze's favor by subtly improving her living conditions. In a way that she doesn't know it's me. But maybe uh, she can assume. So how are we, we going about that? Are you like talking to the people in charge of her uh, imprisonment? And like saying, hey, give her this food or give her this or whatever? Um, 
Yeah, if I have control over being like, give her this food, or whoever is in charge of giving her the food, I'm having my friend Luigi give some better <laughs> food. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, if that sounds like a, sw- a consort or a sway. Probably a consort, honestly, but mm-hmm. I could see sway. Okay, cool. Um, well, I have points in sway, and I don't have them in consort, so... Okay. We're going to try sway and pray. Four and a three. So you're going to get... Uh, let's start a new clock, I guess, which is to improve Maze's condition. I see. Um, <laughs> and you get two ticks in it, because you got a four. Okay. Um, all right, oh. I'm assuming the <clears throat> standard for this, or the procedure for this, pretty used to it by now. We're down a long, scary corridor. Go talk to Maze. Yeah, you. I think at this point you have talked to... I guess the question is, do you want to... Before you do your like, talk with Maze, do you want to increase the effect of this at all? Or roll another, spend a personnel to roll it again? To like, complete Can I try? Yes. yes, I would like to do that. Right, I'll deduct the personnel because Wyzak is not here. Wyzak, to stop me. <laughs> Wyzak, Wyzak raise his brine trip? What the fuck? No. Um, Sunlith raises blue tiger shrimp. Oh, I, I read the, the tense is wrong. I heard I read trying not to get Brian Trump <laughs> killed. And I was like, what the fuck? This dude's got sea monkeys? Where are the supply? Oh, why is that edited it? Okay. Um so do one. So do 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 Blue Tiger oh. shrimp are cool. I'll give you that. Very right. cool shrimp. I'm uh, rolling it, uh, that same roll again. <laughs> Let's roll that same roll again. Okay. Right. So that completes that cool. one. Uh and now you can just remove that clock and then put another tick in your drive clock. Of your drive of save one person. All right, it's half full. We could totally do this, guys. Nothing bad will happen to Maze. Uh, okay. You you've successfully done it. You now know that Luigi's suit is being directed to Maze. Good. So you wanted to talk to her. Yeah, I'm assuming they. Let me in there. I don't know if they like stop me or hassle me in any way before I try to go in. No, they know you by now. Good dolphin. I like it that way. Come and go as I please. (laughs) Anyways, um, he floats into her room as usual. What do I see? She is in there. Um, I think she just finished a plate of delicious spaghetti. With some black squid ink, of course. Or maybe it's purple on this alien world. Sure, sure. And she looks healthy. Much healthier than she has looked. Uh, good food has done her well. Uh, she has like some books around. Um, she has definitely been getting some benefits. Uh, like It's been made clear to whoever's guarding her to um, improve her conditions in more ways than one. Cool. How's she feeling? What's her anger levels at? Yeah, she looks pleased. She looks happy. Like she's just, you've caught her in a relaxed moment. Like she's on her bed playing a a, a future PSP. Oh yeah, she's playing Twisted Metal. <laughs> it is so nice, her maze. Anyways, um, he comes in, does the usual like offers to open the psychic connection between them, so they can like talk more freely if she's open to it. Yeah, she's reluctant but willing. Um, yeah, his emotional state is, like, a mess. He never tries to hide anything from Maze, just as part of trying to gain her trust. And it's just, like, all that's going on for him is just anger that has turned to grief, that has turned to, like, utter exhaustion. And it's directed at Maze, it's directed at everyone on this planet, it's directed at himself. It's just a lot going on so he doesn't like say very much at first but he says hello he asks her if she's enjoying the food yeah she kind of eyes you a little suspiciously and says yeah it's it's unusually good it wasn't like this before i'm glad that it's better maze i will not insult you by calling you a child any longer. You are not what I thought. You are wiser 
than any of the people in the Soul Union would ever give you recognition for. All of these words are truth, but they are not all of the truth. I've been hoping that these meetings could be a give and take between us both. I learned something of you. You learned something of me. Last time I was here, you asked me how I could possibly understand you, how I could possibly know what it's like to be connected to all that you are connected to. And I wanted to share something of myself to make you see that we are not as different as maybe you think we are. And he's asking her permission to go on with this story. Uh, yeah, I guess she puts her PSP down and says, fine, I, I just died anyways. I don't think I could adequately share this in words, phonetics or not. My native language, I wish I could speak to you with my second sight. But I think the psychic connection we share will do just as well to tell you the story. It will be mostly images and feelings. And then he starts to send a memory to Maze. It's a memory of his mother telling him a story of her own memory. And he's about five years old. It's a little baby dolphin. And she is telling him of her time spent in the ocean before she was uplifted because his parents chose the uplift process as dolphins. They were born just in the sea with all the rest of the dolphins who hadn't been uplifted yet. And as part of her life, it's a story of a really large gathering, a huge gathering of dolphins. And it is one of the yearly superpod gatherings where thousands of dolphins will gather to the open ocean not to hunt sardines, not for anything practical, just to all join together because even non-uplifted dolphins have a low-level latent psychic ability and they come together a couple times a year during the warm currents to just be one with each other. And it's a memory that is from his mother's eyes. It's a first-person view. And Maze is getting all these images of being a dolphin swimming with thousands of other bodies around, touching, singing together, just seeing sound as images, and it's beautiful. And there's just a voice all together, all of them singing as one. And I assume it might be very similar to what she's experienced as a clusterist. And just as this memory like reaches its height of this ecstatic union of all these dolphins, it ends. And it's back to the memory being from Baby Sunlit's point of view. And his mom is asking him, you have a choice now. You can stay here in space and continue with the life that we have chosen, or you can go back. Everyone who is an uplifted dolphin has an option to go back from a, for a pilgrimage, to go back to the oceans where we are from, to learn about our culture, and to decide for themselves what they want to do with their lives. And this visual story comes to an end. We're back in this cell, and Sunlith asks Maze, and what do you think I chose when given this choice? I think you left. Obviously, I left. Of course, I chose the ocean. The freedom, the joy, the ecstasy of it all. It was irresistible. I took what became my first pilgrimage to my ancestral waters, expecting to be welcomed home with open hearts, open minds. But it didn't turn out the way I thought it would. You can sense that he wants to say more here, but he's very mindful of the fact that Maze is a captive audience. She doesn't want to just talk at her. He changes the topic here. He says, You have all the pieces before you, Maze. All you've ever known is pain and fear. And what's been asked of you by your people is not fair. What I ask of you is not fair. The long history of our planet 
Your earth, my ocean, is one of chaos, violence, and a desperate reaching for anything that could bring meaning to it all. I beg you to know that I understand. I beg you to know that this desperate reaching for truth, for light, for a less terrifying universe is why I am in front of you now. There is no getting out of this for anyone. Not if your people ascend. Not if the Oro lull us into a comfortable technological sleep. And not even if we cut them off entirely and achieve our own peace for millennia. All we have, and all we've ever had, is each other. And the shared pain that comes from knowing the only meaning we'll ever find is the one we create. I know only of one thing anymore, and that's that I don't want to be responsible for any more death. And I won't be responsible for yours. I want to help you out of here. I don't care what it takes, but I will need your help to do it. I don't know what I'm here to ask you for anymore. I just want you to know that I don't want this to go on. And I can't make all of it stop. But I can maybe make one thing better. And that's your life. Because I'm in charge of it. I don't want to be. You don't want me to be. But it's the truth. And then I'm, I'm really not sure what he is trying to get out of this interaction. Like he said, he's supposed to be here getting more information from her, but I'm not sure he's going to keep doing that. Sure. Um, I think she feels what you want. Like this free, like a freedom for her, I presume, is kind of what you're sending. Mm -hmm. Getting her out of it um, in one way or another. And she, you feel doubt a lot of it. She's not... She doesn't think you can. She doesn't think that there's any way out of this where you don't get the information from her. And I, it's not like... There's a lot, a lot less hate um, now than there was before. It's almost like a sadness. Like, yeah, me too, buddy. <laughs> like, I <laughs> wish I could get out of this without having to betray my people to give up the location of the virtue they want or my home cell here in the city. But I think she, like, leaves you with some of her own memories um, of her just like hanging out in the city like she's definitely younger um, like 10 but she's already holding a gun um, but she's having fun like with her friends who are like also kids playing tag while they have holstered pistols on their on their belts um, and then you know in like a flash of light and like explosion like racks their where they're living, like this little industrial district. And a bunch of her friends are just like dead, uh, dismembered in front of her. Um, and people are running around and screaming. And she's just like looking up at, as a frame, just like starts marching uh, across this landscape, one of the Soul Union frames. Um, and she kind of leaves you with that. Not, not with any like, not with like the hatred that she had before, but like this, like, look what they took from me sort of uh, messaging. And like, you feel her shut the connection after that. Mm -hmm. Sunlith just nods and like is about to ask her if there's anything that she needs and then thinks better of it and says, how much time does he have left with Maze to get this information from her? I think it's kind of ephemeral, but it's like, it's like it's running out. Yeah. And... The peacekeepers are convinced or they know that she knows where this frame is, where this location is. They know where that she knows where this virtue is because you confirmed it for them. That's true. He just has a moment where he's in thought just by himself and then he leaves. Okay. You leave. Good stuff. Good stuff, everyone. Good stuff. Bing. Um, uh, so I guess... Thank you for listening, everybody. Um, thank you so much for your questions and attention. It has been very nice seeing that. Um, and kind of crazy. People care about what the fuck we're doing here, I guess. 500 uh, downloads is not something to cough at. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, that's more than I could have ever hoped for. So thank you, everyone, for listening and liking our stuff. Um, and thank you, uh, Brian, Ewan, Adam, 
and Wyzak, who's not with us right now, rest in peace, um, oh, for every, <laughs> everything uh, you have you've done. Uh, and I will see you all on our vignette episode next time in two weeks for listeners. Oh, boy. Um, can I say, can we say goodbye to the listeners? Bye. Okay. Just this once. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Mwah, love you. We'll miss you. So long. What a bunch of fucking idiots. Oh. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. I need to edit this out real quick. <laughs>